Greetings everyone, Fruit here. Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a nifty Python tool that really caught my attention. Ever since the inception of this channel, I've always had that motivation of educating and making this an instructional channel for not just the experts, architects, and people who are experienced far down in the career, but also for beginners. As we talk about data, we talk about the tools for working with data. Python might come up on that list. For some folks, you might have to go out and learn Python, sometimes by yourself, by watching courses, by watching videos. Any tools or utilities we have in that spirit will always help. So Python Tutor is an interesting tool. It's not going to take you to the advanced level, but it could just be that companion you have on your side with, on your journey to learning and mastering Python to work with data. That said, we're going to dive right in. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description below, pythontutor.com. If you want to check it out, I really highly recommend it, especially for beginners. The way this is going to work is let's go in here and maximize the screen. Once you come in, you can start visualizing code. It does work with Python 3.6, and then you can also select the languages that you want. Now, in some previous videos, I had a lecture where I went through explaining working with uh, functions or functional programming within Python. Let's pick one of the code we went through and see how we can visualize that here in, in Python Tutor. This is a simple Lambda uh, function that takes a couple of numbers and, and gives me the averages. Now, if you're experienced with programming, you will know exactly what's going on here. But if you put yourself in the person who is just learning from the, from the beginning, you want to understand code, what is in a variable and see how the variables are changing and how the conditioners are all are flowing within your code, you can do it with a piece of paper. But this uh, tool should really help with that. There we click on visualize. Let me zoom in here one more time. And so this is the code we're working with. On the right side is where you see the results. At the beginning of the code, the average, so I have a variable here, I'm passing in uh, implementing a function, lambda expression. It takes three variables and it's going to divide them by three and give me the average. Let's just see what the code says instead of me trying to explain. So let's uh, click on next. Now on the right side here, it's telling me there is average and this average is what is in the average is this lambda expression, lambda takes three values. All right. So let's click on, on next. Now what is in the lambda? Lambda is a list of three values. The three values are now in my Lambda. Let's click on next. It's going to go back up and it's going to calculate average. The three values have been passed to Lambda. The average has been calculated. It's giving us a return value, which is 110. Now the result is 110. Let's click on this. Now we'll go into print and print now has the result of what this calculated. So if we print that, it should return 110. All right. I know this might not be very clear for folks who are just coming into Python, but let's, let's take a, an, another example here that could be a little bit simpler. I'm just going to go to geeks for geeks.org. It's a very popular Python, uh, educational site. And if you come in here, geeks for geeks. We're going to take a function that does, we're just going to copy the code here that does uh, Fibonacci. It's a very common one for beginner programmers. Let's edit the code. We're going to put in this function. All right. I like this because there are a couple of things that are happening. It's a Fibonacci. There's some conditioners in here. It's going to check uh, if this, else, if, else, if, and it processes that. And this is a, a recursive function is going to have to go back, right? I think by second modi. So let's, let's, let's visualize this code in action. So now it starts with definition of the function. Just if you think about how the interpreter reads this code, it starts from the very first line, right? Line number one, this is a function. It's not going to run that function. If you click on next, because it can run a function unless that function has been called, it goes to the next line. What does the next life say? And this is a driver program. It says print Fibonacci of nine. We're going to start printing Fibonacci of nine. So even though this is the first line in the code, it never executes that. 
So now we're going to print Fibonacci of 9. Now, when we say print Fibonacci of 9, what's going to happen is we're calling the function both and we're going to pass in the value and this value, this n, will be replaced by 9. So let's see what the code tells us. Now it's gone back up and it's going to do Fibonacci where n is 9. All right, that's how functions work. You define your functions that takes a value and then you can actually call that function with with an instantiated variable. All right, so let's uh, click on next on that. Now we're going inside of this function. We're, we're calling inside of this function. It's going to check. These lines are not being read because it's a comment. We can just keep those, right? That could as well delete them. Now it checks if n is less than zero, if nine, so we're calling Fibonacci of nine is less than zero, print this. All right, so is nine less than zero? From a math class, we know no, nine is not less than zero. It's going to skip that. It's not going to come in here. Now, else if 9 equals to 0, print that. Is 9 equals to 0? Absolutely not. We're not going to return that. Else if 9 equals 1 or 9 equals 2, this is because we're printing Fibonacci. 1 and 2 are pretty constant. Is that true? No, that's not true. Keep going. Else, so now it checks. It's, it checks if any of these conditions haven't met, then else... There is no condition here, so we're just going to have to go execute what is inside of that else. So else return Fibonacci of 9 minus 1 plus Fibonacci of 9 minus 2. And I'm saying 9 minus 1 because the, var the variable here is still 9. So 9 minus 1 plus 9 minus 2. All right. But guess what? When we return this, it means we're going to go back up and call this function again and give it 8 and then give it 7. All right. That will just continue to repeat. And we just go through. So let me, so that will repeat. Now it's seven and it goes back. It's going to repeat. And it's six. It's going to repeat. And it's five. It's going to repeat. And it's four. It's going to repeat. It's three. It's going to repeat. It's going to repeat. Now, what is n? n is three. We should pass this. Now, n is two. All right, we'll send him back again in there. Now, guess what? We're going to get to this point here where n equals 1 or n equals 2. Okay, we're not going to skip this conditional because this is true at this point. Now we're going to have to get in here. So we get in there. Now it says return 1. So 1 has been returned. Okay, but because we had a loop where we've executed for n equals 1, now we have to go back and execute for all the other ends, right? Because we were calling inside of a recursion, so we kind of have to work our way back out of that recursion. We continue this. So this will go for a while. I'm not going to execute all of this, right? Let me just kind of fast forward the steps here and come to towards the end. The, the loop for our recursion is almost done. Now it's coming else there. We're coming back out of our recursion, right? And the return value is 13, the return value will be 34. That is what we get. All right, I would recommend, I know recursion is a little bit of a confusing topic. When I was a long time ago in programming 101, this was one of the things that, you know, that will get you as a foundational concept to understand. I would recommend if you've struggled with this, play around with a tool like this, especially for folks that are really getting up to speed with Python and looking at using it for data science, machine learning, and advanced analytics. Sometimes understanding the basics might just be what you're looking for. I hope this uh, utility will be something you check out and, and share now. There are known limitations if you're going to be more advanced. And this documentation here just does say it. So read through if you're running into issues. Maybe you can reach out to a developer or share feedback. Here is just, I think the person talks about making this work the way a tutor would visualize code in a basic programming class. Check it out. Hopefully this is uh, relevant to you. You can use it for Python, which I tend to work with quite a bit, or JavaScript or C or C++ or Java. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, this has been Fru. I'll see you in the next demo.